Seed and fruit formation, part of sexual reproduction in plants. So the seed and the fruit develop because of double fertilization as a result of these two fertilization events that take place in the ovule of the flower, specifically the embryo sac within the ovule. Fertilization number one forms the diploid zygote. This is when one of those male gamete nuclei fuse with the female egg cell and this forms the diploid zygote from which the embryo plant will develop. And in fertilization number two, the remaining male gamete, that sperm nucleus, will fuse with the two polar nuclei to form a triploid endosperm. So after fertilization, after double fertilization, the fertilized ovule becomes the seed. That's really important to know that statement. The fertilized ovule becomes the seed. Seeds have an outer coating called the testa and it's the ovule walls, the integuments that become the testa of the seed. So you can see these seeds in the picture, they have a brown testa. The diploid zygote that was formed as a result of the first fertilization, this will undergo mitosis to produce the embryo plant. The endosperm, the triploid endosperm, this eventually grows to become a mass of cells that provides nourishment to the embryo. So what happens to the ovary of the flower? Well, the ovary, after all these fertilizations, it swells to become the fruit and its function is to protect the seed and to aid with its dispersal. What is a seed? Well, it's the embryo plant and its food reserve, all surrounded by a protective coat, the testa. The embryo plant is made up of very particular parts. The plumule, this will become the shoots, the radical becomes the root, and it also has these seed leaves called cotyledons. It can sometimes have one or two, depending on the type of plant. So monocots, like maize, their seeds have one cotyledon. And dicots, like broad bean here on the left, and castor seeds on the right, they have two cotyledons, so they're dicots. Seeds are either endospermic or non-endospermic. What does that mean? Well, it means that at maturity, if they're endospermic, they still have the endosperm and this is where the food is stored. So maize is an example of an endospermic seed. Non-endospermic seeds like broad bean here on the right, the endosperm has been absorbed and the food is stored in the cotyledons. So let's just go through the facts. The fertilised ovule becomes the seed. The seed is the embryo plant and its food reserve, all surrounded by a tough coat called the testa. The embryo plant is made up of three parts, the plumule, which forms the shoots, radical, which forms the roots, and the cotyledons. Some seeds can have one cotyledon. Monocots, their seeds have one cotyledon. Some seeds have two cotyledons. Dicots, these have two cotyledons in their seeds. Some seeds are endospermic. This means that they do have an endosperm at maturity and this is where the food is stored in the seed. Some seeds do not have an endosperm. They are non-endospermic and the food is stored in the cotyledons. In the final stages of seed development, the seed loses most of its water content and this commences a period known as dormancy. To explain what dormancy is in seeds, we state that it's a period of reduced metabolic activity where the seed undergoes no growth. So it's almost as if the seed is hibernating and it's waiting for perfect conditions and then it can regrow or germinate. There are benefits to dormancy. Firstly, it allows time for dispersal of the seed. It ensures the seed bank because not every seed will germinate. And it also delays germination until conditions are more favourable. And this gives the plant a better chance of survival. Farmers and gardeners need to know about dormancy because they need to know, for example, how to store the seeds to maintain dormancy. They'd also need to know how to break dormancy, what conditions are necessary. And this would all give them an idea of when to plant. So after seed and fruit formation, it's seed and fruit dispersal, which is transferring or moving the seed as far away from the parent plant as possible. This is really important because it avoids competition with the parent plant and this will give the new plant a better chance of survival. It's also really important for spreading or allowing the seed or the plant to colonise new areas, to grow in new areas. There are four ways in which the seed and fruit can be dispersed. So we have wind, for example, with dandelions, water, for example, with the coconut, Animals, they can eat the fruit and excrete the seed. Some seeds themselves, like burdocks, they have special adaptations, so they cling to the fur of the animals. And then some plants will do it themselves, like pea pods will explode. So this is what you should know at the end of this video. So know that the fertilized ovule becomes the seed. The integuments, the walls of the ovule become the testa, the outer coating of the seed. The embryo plant develops from the diploid zygote and the embryo plant is made up of the plumule, the radical and the cotyledons. Know that the plumule will form the shoots, the radical, the roots and the cotyledons are embryonic seed leaves. 
Endospermic seeds have an endosperm at maturity and this is where the food is stored. Non-endospermic seeds do not have an endosperm at maturity, it's been absorbed and the food is stored in the cotyledons. Examples of both, so know that maize is endospermic and broad bean is non-endospermic and be able to recognise and draw their diagrams, really important. Dormancy is established when the seed loses much of its water content and know the definition of dormancy and why it's important to know about dormancy also. That's been asked twice in the exams. Know that the ovary swells to become the fruit and know methods and examples of seed and fruit dispersal and why they are important. So wind, water, animal and self and why they're important. So the best of luck with all of that revision. Remember to do past papers. That's really important and to practice your diagrams. Best of luck.